Homemakers, Catherine here from Minerva, and today I am going to walk you step by step on how to stitch up the Tia blouse by Michelle Sews. Now, this blouse comes in two views, a short sleeve as well as a long sleeve view, and I am going to do up the long sleeve view for you so you can see how to stitch up the cuffs and add in these really nice button details. But before we get to stitching, we need to get out all of the fabric and supplies that we need. And we've made it easy here at Minerva. We have put together a couple of kits with different types of fabric that you can choose. So go through and pick out the kit that you like best. But if you're not using a kit, let's go through the supplies that you're going to need. Okay, so to begin, we want this beautiful viscose fabric. This is a custom print as well as a directional print. So just pay careful attention to that. Next, we have the paper pattern from Michelle Sews with the two views, short and long sleeved. And this is what it looks like from the back views. It has a little keyhole detail and our full size range from six to 30. Next up, you're going to want some thread. This is Guterman polyester thread to match, some universal sewing needles, a nice sharp one, as well as a single button here. And then we are going to need some fusible interfacing as well. Fantastic. Now that we have all of the supplies ready, let's get to stitching this up. So prepping the pattern and the fabric. So I like to start by tracing out my pattern. You can cut directly into it, but I find with the paper pattern, when you trace it, you can make any alterations that you need. You're also preserving all of the nested sizes here. So I really do like to trace that off as well as add in any notes that I have for the fit on the garment with that. And I did find that this one, because it has a little bit more ease, did fit absolutely wonderfully right out of the box here and do be sure to mark the size that you have created as well as any of the other markings that you are going to want to need when you look at it again so first we are going to do some stay stitching as well as interfacing for the pieces here so with this, I am adding interfacing to the cuff pieces for the long sleeve version. If you are making the short sleeve version, you won't have to do this. I'm just using a silk organza press cloth here just to make sure that I am protecting my fabric. You're also going to want to interface the facing pieces on the neckline and then stay stitch the actual neckline pieces on the bodice. So you want to start at the top and go towards the center rather than going all the way around and you also want to go close to the edge within that seam allowance here so you notice i am flipping it over and then starting at the opposite side and then going in towards the center what this is going to do is prevent any additional stretching because the neckline is cut along that bias so you can see that i've gone from the sides to the center now we're going to stitch up the facing pieces. So they have already been interfaced and we are going to match them up the front and the back along the shoulder seam, which are these two short pieces here. I am adding a couple of pins and then we are going to stitch across here. So don't forget to backstitch at the start and the end of all of our seams as is with all garment sewing. And so I'm just going here and I am stitching that and I am back stitching at both of them, but I am doing a bit of a chain seam just to help reduce any of the threads here. Then we are going to take it to our pressing table and we are going to press these seams open because we want them to lie nice and flat. So don't go ahead and zigzag or serge them because it's going to create additional bulk within this. So I am just using my pressing cloth just to make sure I'm protecting everything. And once it is done, it should look like this. Next, we are going to finish the outside edge and I am going to use my serger. Now you can also zigzag or even turn it under if you don't have an overlocker or a serger handy. This is just a nice quick way to do it. Now, if you are using the serger, leave a nice long tail because we don't want this to fray. So the way in which that we are going to lock this down is we are going to thread this through a wide darning needle and then you're just going to go back through the stitches. And I actually like to weave it in through the fabric to really secure this. You can also knot it, but I find if you weave it through the fabric, it stays pretty secure. Next, we are going to do the bodice darts. 
So with this, we're going to mark out the darts and then with right sides together, I'm going to pin the point of the dart as well as the ends of the dart. Now you can see me flipping towards the back and this is because I am checking to see if my pin is going through that dart that I've drawn on the other side. So it's a little technique that I like to use that really does help you get perfect darts every single time. And then we're going to stitch from the open end of the dart towards the point. You're never going to stitch the opposite way. So we're going to backstitch at the very start. And then when we get to the end of the point, do not backstitch. You're going to lift your needle up and leave two long thread tails, just like so. Then you're going to grab those thread tails and we are going to tie two or three knots along the end of the point of the dart. This creates a nice crisp point off of the dart and reduces any bulk and just looks so nice, especially when using lighter weight fabric such as this. So next we are going to press this dart. First, warm up the tip of that dart and then press the dart down towards the bottom of the bodice. And once that is done, it should look like this. And I was just ironing the front to get out any wrinkles. Now for the shoulder seams. So I have gone ahead and already surged the front and back so shoulder seams separately. Then I'm going to match them up right sides together with a couple of pins, and then we can go ahead and stitch them together with our seam allowance here. So going in here and just removing those pins, back stitching at the start and the end of this seam here for both shoulders. Now, the reason why you want to prepare the edges first and not after is because we want to reduce that bulk along the shoulder seam. And in a later step, we are going to actually be pressing them open. So now we can head to the pressing table. And like I said before, we are going to press these open here. And once we have that done, it should look just like so. Okay, so we've got our darts on the one end. So on the right hand side, you'll see the darts and we've got the front and the back. So the front has the smaller facing piece and the back has the one that scoops down a little bit longer as well as having that line that goes down the back. So first match it up at the shoulder seams and then I am just finding my center points and feeling in along the neckline and adding in all of the pins that I need. So I'm actually going in and I am pinning down this line to make sure everything is perfectly utterly centered on this. This is not necessary, but I find it to really help to make sure that nothing shifts as you are stitching. We're not actually stitching down that line just yet. We're just going to be stitching around the opening of the neckline, but it does help to keep that in place. So go ahead and stitch all the way around that neckline, just like so. And then I am going to fold this in half because I want to find my center back, both on the facing and my blouse, because I want that opening to be exactly center back. So I'm matching up that shoulder seam and then I am finding the centers and making sure everything is nice and flat. And then I am pressing it. So I like to press the facing separate to the actual bodice just to get a nice crisp line. And then I'm going to double check that those lines are indeed along the drawn lines, which they happen to be, but it's a nice way to just double check your work. And then I'm going to place the pins in and I like to place them in horizontally to really hold everything to prevent them from shifting. And then we are going to stitch and we are going to go just along the outside of the line here. So you're not going right on the line, but just a hair beyond it. So I backstitch at the top and then as I'm going down the line, I'm going to remove those pins as I go. Then when I get to this end, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to do two stitches forward, two stitches back, and then two stitches forward again. This is because this is where it's going to take a decent amount of strain. And I really want to make sure that those stitches are secure. And then we're going to go right next to that line. Remember, they're only two stitches apart. So it's just like that, just enough to get your shear blades through. So I'm going to take my shears and I'm going to snip down that line, paying very careful attention not to snip, snip through my stitches. Then I'm going to clip the curves along the neckline. So just go around the entire neckline and clip in the curves, paying careful attention not to snip through those stitching. Okay. So once we have this, then we can go ahead and poke out those corner points. 
And so we are going to go in and we are going to understitch. So we want to make sure that the seam allowance is facing the facing pieces, so not the right side. We're not going to be able to get directly into the corner. So you can see I've got the corner right there and we can't get right up to it, but we're going to get as close as we can. So I'm going to push my fabric and kind of ram the back of my presser foot in there and get as close as I can without creating any puckers. And then we are going to understitch this. And so you can see we've got the facing pieces to the right hand of my work. And I keep double checking to make sure that I have all of the seam allowance towards that facing piece. This is really going to help your facing piece roll to the inside and stay put. And so I'm going to continue going around the entire neckline. Now, of course, I can't get all the way to the end on the other end as well. So you see, I backstitched there. So you can see that's about how far I got. So I've got probably about an inch on either side that I can't understitch, which is completely okay. So the next step here is actually poking it out. I've got my point turner here and I'm just poking this out. Now my fabric is nice and lightweight, so I don't actually have to clip those corners to get a nice crisp point. If you have a bit of a thicker fabric, you might want to clip those corners there just to get a nice crisp turn. So next I am going to press this, but as I'm turning it out, I'm seeing a wee bit of a pucker in here. So I'm going to lift this up. And what that means is I didn't get quite close enough to the inside here. So I'm just going to snip and I'm just using my snips here, not even my shears to make the tiniest snip. And I did two going into one into each corner. This is really going to help to get a nice crisp turn on this keyhole. So I'm just rolling everything and then steam is your best friend. It is going to really help to set this and lie absolutely beautifully in place. Now I'm going to press all along the neckline edge with the facing and your facing should roll absolutely beautifully to the inside and you shouldn't see any of those seams. So next we are going to take the collar piece and along the shoulder seams with that inside facing, I am going to pin it in place right along that seam. Then we are going to stitch in the ditch to secure the facing to the shoulder pieces because we have that seam there. It is going to be completely invisible, but this is what is going to prevent your facing from popping out just as you're walking and wearing your garment, or even when you're washing it, it's going to keep it perfectly in place. And so I like to do a small little back stitch at the end and I like to go from the neckline out. I find that this tends to work best and really helps your neckline to stay in the exact position you like. So once that is done, it should look just like so. And it is invisible from the outside where we stitched in the ditch along those shoulder seams. So next we are going to do the side seams. So with this, we are going to flip this back so that we have wrong sides out and right sides facing. And then we are going to match up those side seams. So there is a notch on the back of your blouse and that is going to match up to where your dart is and then match the top and bottom and then add in all of your pins or clips in between and it should match up perfectly. We're going to stitch it and then we're going to seam finish or serge in my case. You can also zigzag this or even do a French seam. So once that is all done, we are going to do the long gathered sleeves. So with this, this is the keyhole detail. So there's a couple of different measurements that we have to go along here. So we're going to follow those measurements that are in the instruction booklet. We're just going to fold it over just a hair and keep the other line open. So you can see we've got these two little slash marks that are in here. We are actually going to cut along the center of that right up to that point and then it's going to be able to go out and this is going to be our keyhole detail and cut right up to that notch and see how it goes completely straight well that's what we want so once we have that in place our next step here is to add our binding detail you can see i'm just fine tuning that right up to that point and then we're going to take the center of this and the unfolded edge is going to be right sides together with this along that slash mark. And I'm just adding in my pins and I'm using a decent amount of pins because this is a small amount of fabric and is a wee bit fiddly here. 
So once I have that done, we are going to stitch along here. I am going to actually reduce my stitch length to about 1.6 millimeters, just because it is a little bit smaller and I don't want to back stitch on here because it might suck that fabric in. So I find that that is a little tip that helps. You can also put a piece of tissue right behind the end so it doesn't suck that fabric in. So as we continue to go along here, I am just stitching this in and we should be stitching right along that other line that we drew. As you can see, we have it just like so. Now I'm actually going to trim these ends because this piece is slightly longer than it needs to be, which is a good thing. Then I'm going to trim down that seam allowance because it's going to make the next step a little bit easier. Now this part is optional, but I do highly suggest it. Next, we are going to take out our pressing hem and then we are going to press this. So we've already got it pre-folded in once and then we're going to fold it over again. And so it should be bound from the inside and you shouldn't really see anything along the outside edge here. So we've got a nice folded edge going along the outside here. So you can see how we're flipping it over and then we are going to pin or clip this in place and then stitch around the outside. So it should look like this with a nice bound edge in the center there. Okay, so once this is done, there is another step because it's now a little bit arched and rounded. We want a nice crisp miter to this. Give it a good press and then go and stitch that at about a 45 degree angle right here. And then you can see as we flip it out, it's got a beautiful point and mitered corner in here. Go and give it a press and look at how lovely that lies. So next we're actually going to move this right sides together along the underarm side seam here of the sleeve and we are going to stitch this. We're going to stitch it and then we're going to serge it or zigzag it. And once that is done, it should look just like so. So next we are going to do gathering stitches along the entire cuff and between those two notches. So set your stitch length to the longest length possible right here, and then go ahead and pull your bobbin thread up and grab two long tails. So we want to make sure that both the bobbin thread and the top thread have nice long tails. Then where the dots begin is where we are going to do the two rows of gathering stitches. So I like to do one along the edge and then one in slightly, but making sure to keep them within our seam allowance, unless you feel like unpicking some gathering stitches a little later on, then leave a second long tail here. So see how we've got all these big long tails with those two rows of gathering stitches that is going to help you out when you gather them in a later step. So you can see it moves nicely along there. So next we have our cuffs. One is interfaced and one is not. And then we're going to place them right sides together, matching up the notches that we have here. And then I'm going to pin them along the bottom edge of the cuff. And then we're going to stitch that. So just go ahead and stitch it within the seam allowance. And then we're going to give it a good press and we're going to press it to the one that is not interfaced. So that's actually going to be the inside of the cuff and I gave it a press on the right side as well. And then we are going to go ahead and see where all three of these little dots are. We are then going to match that up. So we're going to take our sleeve and we are going to match it up. So you see where the keyhole is, and that is where we are going to match up those dots. And we're going to place that up along the raw edge here. And remember, this is the interfaced portion of the cuff. We want to put the right side or the one that's going on the outside, that being the one with the interfacing is going to go closest to this sleeve. So then I am just pulling my gathering stitches and then I am pinning the other end, which is also matching up to those dots. And then I am distributing the fullness evenly throughout that sleeve along the cuff here. And there is a decent amount of gathers, which gives a really nice billowy sleeve with this. So once that's done, we are going to stitch this and do be sure to leave those open ends. So I also went ahead and searched that just to clean up those edges. That is completely optional. You're not going to see it, but it sure does make a difference when you're pressing it and doing the next step. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. 
and I'm just checking the outside, making sure everything looks nice because in this step, we are going to enclose it here. So we're going to place it right sides together. So we're folding that cuff back up on itself. And you can see along the one edge where we have that nice little overlap. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna pin it. And you want to work from the side that has the interfacing on it, the one that you can see where the edge comes to along that keyhole detail. So then we're going to sew along there. And when we sew, we're going to go straight along that line where that keyhole meets up. And I've also gone ahead and surged that. And then I've clipped the corners because it's going to give a nice crisp corner on this to make it a bit easier. Now we are going to come here and we are going to poke out those corners using a point turner. You can also use a knitting needle or a chopstick. And then we are going to press this to make sure they are nice and crisp. And so you can see how it folds beautifully in and ties absolutely seamlessly with that keyhole detail within that cuff. So next I'm getting my sleeve roll out because it's a little bit easier to work with on this. And now we're going to fold over the edge so that it is going just a hair over that seam line because in our next step, we're going to stitch in the ditch. So it needs to go over that seam line, not right on it, but just slightly over to make sure that we are catching it. So then I'm going to place them in right along where I'm going to be stitching and I flip to the back and this is where I am double checking to see if I have properly gone in and through the back. So you can see, I ha can see those pins on the back that they are going through and at an even rate, because if it's going through more on one side and not so much on the other, then we know that it's not going to be consistent and it's not going to look as nice on the inside. And then we're going to stitch in the ditch here, which looks just like so, and you can't even see it from the front. And this is what it looks like on the inside here. And this is how our cuff is. So you can see we've got the back and the front of our sleeve. So I'm just gonna lay this out here, and then you can see where we're going to place our buttons. So we are going to place the buttons on the front and the button holes along the back. So I am just going to mark that out and I have attached the buttonholes and the buttons and it should look just like so. Next, we are going to inset the sleeve. So we do have a back, the back has two notches and the front has a single notch and you are going to match those up and there is a notch along the center of the sleeve and that is to denote the top of the sleeve cap which will match up to the shoulder seam. So I am pinning those first as well as the underarm seam which will match the underarm seam of the sleeve as well as the blouse. And then I am going in and I'm pinning right up until we need to start gathering. And then I will gather those pleats as far as to the sleeve cap where that next pin is and distribute them as evenly as I can. And this helps to provide an even distribution of gathers both in the front and the back and you don't have more in one side than in the other side. Stitch it and serge it and then your sleeve should look like this when we have it all pushed out. With a nice beautiful billowing sleeve. And the next step here is the bottom hem. So with this, I've taken the liberty of surging the bottom. This is completely optional. And I do this because I find it so easy to use as a measuring gauge because the exact width of my overlocked hem, I am folding that up. Now you could measure it and you can eyeball it, especially if you've been sewing a bit, but this is so much easier. And then do a double fold hem. So the exact width again, I find this way to be so much faster, even though you're taking the time to surge it. And it also provides a little bit of stability along the bottom of the hem because you have that additional thread in there. And then we're just going to top stitch all along the bottom and it should look just like so. And last but not least, we are going to do the neck closure. So with this, you have a couple of different options here. So we do have one option, which is a thread chain or an elastic. And I'm actually opting to do an elastic just because I find it a little bit easier to knot on. And it's also a bit more forgiving. If I forget to undo the button, it probably won't snap like a thread chain will. So I'm going to take this elastic and I'm just stitching it on and then clipping the excess. And then I can do up my button just like so. 
And now our blouse is all done and we are getting ready for the final reveal and I'd love to show you. Now that your Tia blouse is all done, it is ready to wear. If you have any questions at all, do let us know in the comments down below and we will be certain to answer them as soon as we can. And if you're not already a member or have an account here at Minerva, you can go and create a free account and share all of your wonderful sewing and creative makes with our community of fellow makers. Until next time, makers, let's get stitching.